Good day, everyone. If I could just get your attention just for a few moments, I'd just like to share with you uh, what's been on my heart over the past little while. It's a subject, no doubt, we all familiar with, fear. And I'd just like to speak about overcoming fear or embracing fear. I think we're made for fear. We're made to live with fear, not without it, as we'd like to think so. But I feel we get preoccupied with things we can see and hear and touch. I know I do. Many times in my life I've allowed this to happen, whether that be with us personally or with those around us. But people nor circumstances aren't what we're supposed to fear. About such things, Jesus says, do not fear. In the Old Testament, God, speaking with Moses, told him to not to fear. He would be with him. And then Moses, speaking with Joshua, just before going into the promised land, although facing many enemies, we see in Deuteronomy 31, verses 7 and 8, Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with this people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them. And you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you. He will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. And I just want to say, how big is our God today? How do you see him? How big is he? In Exodus 33, 18 to 23, we read about Moses just before he had spoke to God and said that he didn't want to go, to go any further without the presence of God was going to go with him. But God had said that he wasn't going to go with the people, but Moses said, I, I will not go up without you go with me. And in here we read verse 18, it says, Then Moses said, Now show me your glory. And the Lord said, I will cause all my goodness to pass in front of you, and I will proclaim my name, the Lord, in your presence. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. But he said, you cannot see my face for no one may see me and live. Then the Lord said, there is a place near me where you may stand on a rock. When my glory passes by, I will put you in the cleft of the rock and cover you with my hand until I have passed by. Then I will remove my hand, and you will see my back, but my face must not be seen. We cannot look at God in all his glory. Oh, what a God we serve today as a child of God. In Proverbs 1 and 7, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Luke 12, 4 to 7, I tell you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that can do no more. But I will show you who you should fear. Fear him who, after your body has been killed, has authority to throw you into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Then it says, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows, so we are not to worry. What does it mean to fear God? I think it means keeping our thinking straight, being focused on God. It means seeing God in all his power, in proper relation and proportion to the people and the problems in this world. You know, God isn't smaller than our financial needs, our difficult work situations, difficult maybe with children, or this virus, this pandemic we are facing now. He's not even equal to any of this. No, I want to tell you, my God is so much bigger, so much more powerful. Even comparing him through these things doesn't even make sense. For it says he's Alpha, he's Omega, he's the beginning, he's the end, he's everything, he's the end between. In Luke 12, 22 to 26, it says, 
Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, it says, by worrying can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot, cannot do this very little things, why do you worry about the rest? And listen, you know what's astonishing? Is this fearsome God, for some reason, chooses to love each of us with a love that's good, and it will never diminish or relent. So to him, we must respond as we're conditioned to respond to fear. Don't let fear control us or numb us. We must respond by recognizing every day, every moment, that God is the most important. He's the most powerful force in our lives. And listen, that we are his favored children. Can I just suggest to you today, name your biggest fear. Write them down. Look at them. Now, imagine them as God sees them. How frightening are they now? The tr truth is, things we can see, hear, touch, they're never our ultimate threat. Not when God is around, and we know he's always around. But I think our ultimate threat is choosing to live as if these things are bigger than what God is. Let me finish with this verse. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So let's trust him today. That verse has been dear to me some time ago when I was going through a situation. One of my daughters gave me this on a plaque and I have it on my wall at home. And every once in a while, I, my eyes fall to it. Do not be afraid. He's with you today. I want to tell you as a child of God, he's with you. And those that are not following Christ today, I ask you to turn to him. Trust God. He can so much take this fear as we approach him, as we come to him, as we have fellowship with him on a daily basis. I tell you, this fear subsides. His presence fills your life. And you will certainly sense God's presence. So be blessed today. Be blessed in Jesus' name. I pray for you.